Breaking news, Donald Trump has won the 2024 presidential election, but will the economy be better off? The answer will only shock MAGA people who, unsurprisingly, do not know what tariffs are or how they work. More on this story tonight on ATP News at 10. Hello, Timothy. Why the fuck are you so jubilant? Oh my god, did you help him get elected again? What? No, gross. I'm the embodiment of America, and more than half of America is feeling joyous right now, so therefore I am. But then part of me is also feeling very dead inside. And the other part is ready for a fight, and the other part is hungry, but that's probably because I have not had lunch. So what, does this mean you're going to be a Trump guy now because half the country voted for him? Oh, absolutely not. Like all Americans, especially the ones that voted for Donald Trump for his economic policies, I like money. However, those economy-focused Trump voters will likely experience their buyer's remorse rather quickly considering the economic policies that Donald Trump is trying to put forth were already called out by almost 70% of economists as being bad and are now being called out by his own party members as being bad. Therefore, due to my love of money, I could never support a candidate that would cripple the economy. I mean, the stock market and Bitcoin, like, shot up like crazy when he won. Oh, you mean the two markets that are totally known for being completely stable and not volatile in any way, or do I need to be more sarcastic? I mean, yeah, fair point. Anyone who uses the stock market as a measurement for how well the economy is doing does not know how the economy actually works. And I venture to guess that we are going to find out a lot of Trump supporters don't actually know what tariffs are or how they work considering the companies around the country are already preparing to raise prices in response to Donald Trump's tariffs. Prices will go up, wages will go down, and people like me and the billionaire class will get richer and richer because of it. Just like the billionaire class that got richer right after Donald Trump was elected, including Elon Musk, who will serve in Donald Trump's administration. America is fun, isn't it? I mean, no, not at all. How the fuck did we lose this? You said that if we ran on abortion, we would win. Yes, and I believe now that I was wrong. Whoa, you didn't even stutter when you said that. Well, I am the embodiment of an only hope for America, and since these United States is evolving, so am I, whether they or I like it or not. Right, okay, well then, since you are the embodiment of America, since the majority of people voted for him, shouldn't you be more like them? Oh, no, absolutely not. Unlike Trump supporters, I am not afraid of anything. They, however, are afraid of quite literally almost everything, and Donald Trump stoked those fears, and as a result, they handed him the presidency. This is not the first time in these United States that we have gone through extreme turmoil. And I use that term extreme loosely. There are genocides happening all over the world, and we are not having one here currently. But we are supporting them, and Donald Trump will be making that worse. Dude, exactly. So where was the disconnect? I mean, with Kamala Harris, she had called for a ceasefire, a two-state solution. She was trying to differentiate herself from Joe Biden a little bit. Not enough. That was an issue. But Donald Trump said he wants Israel to finish the job, not to mention... All of the other things that he said and did and all of these things that we had talked about with Project 2025 and the dangers of him. So where was the where was the disconnect and what happened? I mean, it looked like we were going to win and there was a resounding loss. Ah, well, to quote one of my dearest friends ever, it's uh, the economy, stupid. What do you mean? Well, let me preface this by saying this is from the point of view of an economy-based Trump voter, not a MAGA crazy. Although plenty of them are also economy-based Trump voters, they're just also, you know, racists. And it is okay to call anybody who called for mass deportations racist. But we'll touch on that next year. For now, let's focus on the economy. Despite the economy not being as bad as Trump says that it is, people still didn't feel as though it was. They saw the prices be high, despite them now coming down. They saw gas prices be high, despite gas prices always being high during the summer, but that's just neither here nor there at this point. And they got scared. And when people get scared, they think about them and their family. They do not get, in their view, the luxury of caring about gay and trans rights, immigration, 
and democracy in the United States, which has been shaky at best for a long time, and technically does not exist considering not everybody has an equal right to vote in this country. Yeah, but that is just absolute privilege, though. And? And what? Well, you say that as if it's trying to shame somebody into doing the right thing. Privilege exists, my friend, and people will utilize it no matter what. Simply calling it out does nothing, especially when their paycheck and livelihood is on the line. And considering these people feel that those things were being affected by Joe Biden's economy and Kamala Harris did not try and differentiate herself from his economic plan enough, well, the people voted for Trump in droves and he won by a landslide because he promised change. And boy, oh boy, will he deliver it. And it is all thanks to voters who felt the economy was bad without actually knowing how the economy works. They are told, or rather shouted at, how the economy works, and... They think that China and other countries will pay these tariffs when actually, well, like I said before, the companies will be putting the prices up, the wages down, and that's how those tariffs will be paid off. Not to mention the tax cuts that they're trying to put forth that will only benefit people like me in the billionaire class. Jesus, so what, that's it? More than half of America potentially traded away the rights of millions for cheaper eggs and gas? Oh, absolutely. Like I said earlier, it's the economy, stupid. Stop saying that. Oh, I will never stop speaking the truth as long as the First Amendment is in place. And the truth is, it wasn't just the economy that helped push Trump over the edge, it was men. Very angry men. Men who feel like their place in this world is changing in a way they do not want it to. Whether it be their jobs going away and they are not able to provide for their family, or the fact that women are outpacing men in a lot of ways in the workforce. So, it's what, economic sexism? Both outward and internalized, yes. Okay, but what about women then? Kamala Harris and everybody kept saying, including us, that women were going to turn out for her because she was going to save abortion. Well, women did turn out for abortion. In fact, it passed in seven states, and in two that it didn't, it actually reached the over 50% marker, but it needed to reach 60% to actually pass. And then a huge swath of those same women then turned around and voted for Donald Trump because of, again, his economic policies. Economic policies that they think will work and, well, maybe they will, maybe they won't. They likely won't, but maybe they will. And if they do, well, then Donald Trump will be able to hold on to that for a very long time. Or at the very least, he will either say that his economic policies work despite the contrary, or just leave other economic policies in place and take credit for them. Either way, Donald Trump has won. The battle, but not the war. Oh my god, are you finally about to give us some hope? Yes, yes, let's get your IV put in so you can take this hope straight to the veins. Oh, thank god, I really need it. All right, America, here's your hope for the day. Several states like Washington and California, as well as several different activist groups like the ACLU, have already been preparing for a Donald Trump presidency. And how they will fight him legally through everything that he tries to do. Things like getting rid of the Department of Education, getting rid of gay marriage, all things he said he was wanted to do, getting rid of gender-affirming care, all of these things good Americans are ready to fight for. I know the Democrats lost and they are trying to blame everybody but themselves, but they are still there to fight off the fascism. They are still the institution that is there and prepared to fight Donald Trump on all fronts. And remember, playing the blame game doesn't really solve anything, despite the fact that Joe Biden really should have dropped out two years ago and just been that transitional candidate and allowed the Democrats to actually have a real primary, but that's neither here nor there and is in the past and cannot be changed because time travel doesn't exist. Yes, it does. Well, yes, but only through the use of Christmas magic and the American people don't really have access to that like you and I. Yeah, fair point. So, all right. The economy is to blame, and not the huge swath of people that stayed home, including a huge chunk of leftists. Yes, we could blame them, but uh, there's not really a but there. I mean, they were only mad at Joe Biden for his policies, but when it actually came down to voting for the rights of millions of people, fully knowing that Donald Trump would beat Kamala Harris if they did stay home, uh, some blame can be cast there, and that's just a hard truth. Like I said, I will always tell the truth, whether you all like it or not. Yeah, all right. Well, so what now, man? What, what do we do? Well, we fight and we win, if we can. 
And if we're even allowed to, because who knows what's going to happen in the next four years. Maybe Donald Trump will get a third term. Oh my god, I don't want to think about that. All right, what would you rather think about? Our War on Christmas episode, or the fact that we're coming back as a cartoon in the new year? All right, well, the War on Christmas episode, let's just do a Christmas party, because this has been a shit year. All right, I will have my assistant call my personal caterers, Wolfgang Puck and Paul Key. Okay, very down for that. Uh, well, the cartoon starts production soon and will come out in February, so we don't really need to talk about that in this moment. Fair enough. We also need to get back on our road trip, though, man. Ah, indeed. Actually, I don't even think the American people who listen to Road Trip know how we got back to here. Has that episode not come out yet? Well, no, because we haven't recorded any more of Road Trip, man. Oh, right. You mean because the Christmas portal that was supposed to spit us out back in August 2023 actually spit us out in January 2024? Leaving us with the impossible choice of completing our road trip to get my powers back or saving the country. Yeah, you've been sitting here powerless for all of 2024. How are you doing? Well, I feel as powerless as the blue half of America feels right now. But much like that half of America, I will do everything I can to get that power back. For me, that will involve me and my producer Tim traveling state to state trying to get my powers back by interacting with the zaniest characters you've ever seen on Road Trip A Journey Across America, out now on all podcast apps. But for the rest of America, it will be to fight locally. It will be to help serve in your community. It will be you helping your neighbors. It will be you helping your friends and family and simply showing kindness. As well as getting a passport, a vasectomy, or an IUD, and deleting the period tracker or ovulation tracker from your phone, if applicable. But it also means keeping the fight going. How that fight plays out is up to the American people. I just hope for the sake of the American people, it is a peaceful fight. That said, it is time for Tim and I to go plan the Shway Media Office Christmas Party, as well as plan our road trip across America, and America, the podcast, the animated series. Wait a second, I just realized, how are we going to do the cartoon version and go on our road trip at the same time? Oh, I'll just use the device that I use to create the cute news staff, you know, those animated characters on TikTok. Oh, I know them. They text me a lot of those good morning gifts, but yeah, they're on cute.news on TikTok and at cute news team on YouTube. Yes, well, the device I I use to create them has a duplicate setting, and I'll just use that to make animated clones of us. I don't like the idea of having a clone, man. You have a voice clone. Yeah, but that's for work and doesn't have sentience. Well, these are for work, and they will have no idea of our existence. But will they be sentient? Uh, a little bit, yes. <sighs> all right. Oh, come on, cheer up. It's Trump's America, baby. We're all gonna be rich, right? No, these last 12 minutes have been about the opposite of that. Well, then at least me and my billionaire friends will stay rich. Welcome to Trump's America. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to follow the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And be sure to follow at America the Podcast on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. We'll be back in December for our War on Christmas episode, and then again in the new year with Road Trip A Journey Across America and America the Podcast the Animated Series, which will still come out in audio format in this feed. But you're gonna want to watch on YouTube so you don't miss any of the hilarious visual jokes and, uh, you know, help raise our view count so that we earn all of those sweet, sweet monetization dollars from YouTube. And I want to give a special thank you to the election workers from this 2024 election, as well as all of the Democratic organizers. Especially Andrew Kent Turner, a writer for America the Podcast, podcaster for America the Conversation and They're Not Sending Their Best, and a Democratic organizer who has worked through several different campaigns. You, Andrew, as well as every other election and campaign worker out there who volunteered and gave their blood, sweat, and tears to these United States, you are thanked. You are appreciated, and our gratitude at this show is endless. We will be in your ears again soon. For now, and as always, good night and good fight. It's America, the podcast! You've been listening to America, the podcast, the original series. The show stars Tim Philippi and Thebid ISA starred the embodiment of an only hope for America as themselves. Any additional voices heard in this episode were portrayed by the fabulous cast of voice actors listed in the show notes. The amazing America, the podcast theme song you are listening to is by Timmy Two-Step and all other music and sounds heard in this show were procured through Storyblocks, Pixabay, Freesound.org, and Sonus. 
America, the podcast is recorded at Shway Media Studios in Austin, Texas, and is mixed and edited by Tim Philippi. Executive producers for this show are Alana Matos, Tim Philippi, and Thibbet ISA Star. For more information, please visit shwaymedia.com and americathepodcast.com. Copyright 2024, all rights reserved. been a production of Shui Media, all rights reserved. For more information, please visit shuimedia.com.